Okay, so this is where I am with this engine teardown and analysis. Uh, so far I have it torn down with the cylinder head taken off and I've looked through all the gaskets. I think it still think it's a head gasket, but I'm not absolutely certain. Uh, this is the 1100cc Yamaha engine that came out of my Wave Runner, which is this Kawasaki Jet Ski. It's, jet Ski is a trade name. This is a Yamaha, so I got to call it Wave Runner. And it's an 1100cc engine. It's just over 67 cubic inches, which means it's like 1.03 liters, something around there, just over a liter. That's how big this engine is. So it's, it's comparable to a small, small car engine. You might have something similar in your car. So I'm, I'm going ahead with the diagnostic part of this engine teardown, and I'm at the point where I need to do some research. And I cannot stress enough that when you're doing something like this, you have to do research. You have to spend time looking at information and asking questions. That's going to help you the most. And there are some things you should really have. You should have an, uh, an engine assembly document or exploded view of the entire engine, component level showing you all the components of the engine. Uh, you should have some flow diagrams, something that shows the flow of the coolant through the engine, something that, something that shows the flow of the oil through the engine. So this is the point I'm at the engine. Let's, I'm going to show you what I have for some diagnosis tools right now and uh, what I've done so far for research. Now here is a series of events that led to uh, what was going on. Now remember, this engine came out of watercraft. I put this engine away, or it sat, from September uh, to roughly end of January, no, I'm sorry, mid-January, where the temperature got cold enough where some, some water in there, coolant would have got frozen. There's no coolant in here because it's not a closed loop system like a car. It's a water-cooled engine, picks up the water from the, the, the water around it as you're going through the water, picks up water, puts it through the engine and cools it, also cools the exhaust. This is a series of events that happened when I took it out of my storage. First of all, I hooked up uh, the water. The water... Let me see if I can show you here real quick if I have it. Hold on, I have it handy. Yeah, I got it right here. This device right here is simply, you, 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 put, this, you put the hose in here, you plug this into the system where that goes into the engine, and it puts water through the engine just like your water pump would. So this acts as, acts as a water pump, right? So I turned on the water, and when I went in to turn over the engine, it immediately locked up. It hydrolocked. I didn't know at the time it was hydrolocked because I thought the battery was dead because it was sitting and, 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 I, and I thought the battery was dead. So I took the battery out, charged it up, took out the plugs, make sure everything was clean. Then I cleaned it all out, cleaned out the cylinders and the plugs, started it. After I started it, I turned on the water. So I had this plugged in and I turned on the engine and started it. This is what happened immediately. Immediately. Blue smoke and steam started coming out of the exhaust. Now if you're not familiar with, with a jet ski, familiar with a jet ski or a wave runner, water flows through the engine, it flows through the muffler, it comes out the back, and the exhaust also comes out the back. So immediately blue smoke and steam started coming out the back with the water that was flowing through. There was non-emulsified oil in the water. Non-emulsified meaning that when you get that brown sludgy oil in your in your engine where the coolant mixes with the oil it gets brown and sludgy it wasn't like that it was pretty clear oil uh, it was it was dirty it was it was not clean oil but it was it wasn't mixed with water so i stopped the engine i stopped the engine immediately and what i found there was water in all the cylinders that is why i started to tear it down now let me find you some some other show you some other interesting things that i found while taking it apart this is the exhaust manifold, and this is where it would match up to the engine, all four cylinders here. So you have the exhaust would go through here, and the coolant flows through the exhaust manifold to keep the manifold, exhaust manifold cool while it's in the engine. And this is a, a feed hose that goes in. Now what I wanted to find out was what did the oil, if there was oil in exhaust, where was it coming from? So I turned it over, and this is what I found. If I can look, if you see this. Now this is oil, raw oil that must have came from the engine. So somehow oil got from inside the engine, inside the exhaust manifold, and collected, probably collected in, in, in somewhere in the manifold here. And then when I turn this over and let it sit and drain, it sat here. And you can see this is, it's not emulsified, it's not like it's mixed with water. But that doesn't mean there wasn't water in it because... Uh, it could have evaporated, could have heated, could have boiled away. A lot of things could have happened. So there, there's evidence, obviously evidence, of oil in the exhaust manifold. So somehow oil was getting from the crankcase or the cylinder head into the exhaust. That is uh, one of the things I found. The next thing I found was oil in the intake manifold. And I showed you this where it was in the intake runners here. 
but when I turned it over and, and laid it here, I found oil was dripping out of the intake manifold here. Uh, this is sort of the intake plenum because it is fuel injected. So there's oil here leaking out of the intake. And that's not to say it didn't rest here in the plenum and by the time I got it off and set it flat that the oil collected in one spot. So I can't put much stock in the fact that the oil, there's more oil on this side than there is out of this side. It could have just collected that way. The muffler itself, continuing on with the pipes, the, going down the rest of the exhaust system, it doesn't look like it got too far. So whatever oil was in there pretty much stayed in the exhaust manifold itself. One of the cool things I, I got during my research, I downloaded the service manual for this engine and it really tells a lot. And one of the uh, really cool things and one thing that is really helpful right here is the coolant flow. How does the coolant get through the engine? Now, when you hook up the water from the uh, hose to get cool in here, what happens is there's a, it goes a few directions. First it comes in here and then it goes up into this oil cooler. And this is just an oil cooler where water goes through, it cools the oil down, and it goes forward here, it goes through the exhaust. This is where we saw the oil sitting. It goes through the exhaust and it comes out. As the water goes inside the exhaust, it goes out these ports, it goes into the cylinder head, cools the cylinder head, and it comes out through a return. The other direction it goes is it goes here, it goes up and it goes into the block, it cools, and it comes back out, goes pushes up through the cylinder head and goes back out. So the cylinder head is cooled through water that goes in, comes up, it goes into the exhaust, comes through the cylinder head and goes out. The block, water comes in, goes through the block, goes through the cylinder head and goes out. Water also goes up in front to this uh, hose that goes up into the exhaust, it cools the muffler, this is the muffler portion, cools that and it goes out and then it goes to the back, this, this is just where it connects and it goes back out, this is where it goes out through the exhaust, through the back of the of the jet ski, so, or wave runner, whatever you want, I want to say jet ski because everybody knows what a jet ski is. So this is how the coolant goes. Now, I found water right here, I found water in all the cylinders, so it would make sense that water somehow is getting from where it transfers from the block to the head and got into the cylinders. I also found oil right here. This is the manifold that I took off where I showed you where the oil is. So there's oil inside this manifold. So the manifold is connected right here to the cylinder head and somehow oil got into this manifold and into the cylinders to burn. This is where the blue smoke was coming from. Oil was getting into the cylinders and oil was also getting in to the exhaust manifold. Now if the head gasket was leaking you would get water and oil into the cylinders. That would account for that but it would not account for how oil got into the exhaust manifold. That is what I'm trying to figure out. That's why I'm thinking crack cylinder head or something else inside the cylinder head. Now let's look at the oil, the way the uh, oil flows through the engine. Here's the lubrication system and again here's our oil reservoir. This is where the oil is collected and is cooled. It goes through this uh, oil separator and comes and dumps on top of the cylinder head where it lubricates the cam goes down over the timing chain, gets collected through the dry sump and returns back up through the oil filter, goes through the oil pump, the oil pump which has sort of a bypass line here and it goes back. And now, why, why is this important for us? Now, again, I found water on top of all of the cylinder heads, or I'm, so, I'm sorry, on top of all the pistons, so there was oil in the cylinders and there was oil in the exhaust. So somehow the oil that gets pumped across the camshafts here was getting into the exhaust ports and pushing oil into the exhaust. It was also pushing oil into the cylinders. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. So now I know how the coolant goes through the engine or flows through the engine. I know how the lubrication goes through the engine. So I have to account for these two things. I have to account for water, plain water or coolant being in each cylinder. Again, head gasket, cracked cylinder head. I have to account for the oil in the exhaust manifold. Head gasket, probably not. Cracked head, most definitely. Also, oil in the intake. Cracked head gasket, no. Cracked head, most definitely. So, uh, I have to take the cylinder head apart. I'm not super concerned right now about the block 
If I can get away with it, if I can, I'm not going to tear down the block because the crankcase and the oil pan, oil pan from the dry sump, are put together with a special RTV that's not really commercially available. And if I can put it together without disturbing it, I'll do that. But I still have to take off each end to look at the generator and the oil pump, and I'll do that. So let's take a look at the cylinder head right now. And I, what I started to do, I started to research parts for the cylinder head just to take a look at it because I wanted to see how the valves were put together and know how many parts there are. I have, I have basic parts there. I have the valve. I have a, a valve guide. There's a seal. There's a spring seat, spring. There's a cap. There are two keys. There's a, a shim, which shims the top cap to the camshaft, so that spacer is a, sp a specific size to that valve in that specific location, and then there's the caps. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten parts to a valve. I have five valves per cylinder, that's 50 parts per cylinder, four cylinders, so that's 200 parts that I would have for this cylinder head. And let me show you how I keep track of that as I take it apart. Okay, so here's my cylinder head, and I'm gonna I've already started taking it apart, but what I found is really easy but what helps a lot when you take apart a cylinder head to make sure you put the parts in right back in the exact location is to take a table and I have a simple folding table here and you can see that I took this piece of plastic you know that uh, kind of plastic you use for a wedding aisle runner it's finally good for something you know so I take that plastic and I spread it out on the table and I know I have all the parts uh, the ten parts for each valve so I have you know the cap the spacer and then I know I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is the valve guide. I'm not going to take the valve guide out. But I have one of those locations for every cylinder. So every cylinder I have cap, shim, keys. So there's going to be two keys in there, retainer, spring, seat, seal, guides. So they have that for every cylinder. I have five valves per cylinder. So I have one, two, three, four, five spots per cylinder. And I have all four cylinders laid out. So I'm going to take the cylinder head apart and so I can take a good look inside. It's pretty complex as you can see. And I want to take a look inside and see if I can find a crack that would allow oil to get in the, in the exhaust and coolant to get into the cylinders. And I think the problem lies in here. So as I take this apart, I'm going to pull this apart, I'll pull, lay all the parts, and then we'll take a look at the cylinder head. So this is where I am with this whole project, or this whole uh, engine teardown. I had the cylinder head all torn apart. I looked under, uh, uh, looked at all the parts with a 10 power eye loop. I didn't find any cracks, any significant damage to any parts. I didn't find any significant damage to any of the seals. That's not to say there wasn't any, but I didn't find anything. The only thing I did find was some very fine metal chunks. Almost like something extremely bit brittle broke and scattered some fine parts. I didn't find enough of these little pieces or parts to make up any sizable thing. So I'm not absolutely certain what it is. I'm, I'm looking this way because all my parts are on the table there. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. So I can't say for sure what that is. Uncertain. It could have been something during a disassembly process. I'm not really sure. So what I'm trying to solve at this point is how did water get into the cylinders? Water gasket or a head gasket? Yep, that would cause it. How did oil get into the cylinders? Could that be head gasket? Yes. How did oil get into the intake manifold? Head gasket? Sure. There's oil in the cylinders to go through the exhaust manifold through inversion, sucking it back out, could end up in the intake manifold. Uh, head gasket, uh, the head cracked itself, I don't know at this point. I'm going to have to take it to my buddy Paul over at JNL Performance. I'm going to have him take a look at it, have him clean it, magnaflux it, look at it through his equipment, see if he can find some sort of cracks. If there are no cracks in the head, if there are no, uh, I'm going to inspect all the parts. If I can't find any problems with any of the parts, I'm going to have to assume that it was simply a head gasket. I don't necessarily know how becoming frozen would allow the head gasket to fail, allowing coolant or water into the cylinders and oil into the cylinders, but the, um, I'm thinking the gasket is steel, the head block are aluminum. Is there an expansion difference? Maybe the, the, the integrity between the gasket and the two parts failed because of 
moisture, moisture left over from humidity, it froze and expanded. I don't know. It was cold for a long period of time. So I'm going to say this thing was frozen at near zero degrees for probably close to probably two weeks, two to three weeks. So it's possible. But I haven't found any specific thing that would show uh, a significant breakdown of any part that would lead to the problems that I had. The seals, the valve seals themselves, the stem seals, again I'm looking that way because that's where the parts are, they're made of a rubber material. It doesn't look like they would freeze, fail, and cause that amount of oil to dump into the cylinders. Again, still wouldn't account for the water. Doesn't mean I don't have more than one problem. It could be a couple things. I don't know. It could be a head gasket, could be seals, could be a crack, could be a bunch of things. But at this point, I really don't know. So I'm going to take this cylinder head, have it checked. While it's being checked, I'm going to go and then I'm going to inspect all my components to see if I can find anything on those components. If I can't find anything, I'm going to have to go through the assembly process and check all the fits and see what happened and look for it there. Because right now, as it sits, I don't think it's the block. I do, uh, certainly not sure about the head gasket. That's kind of a 50% cil uh, cylinder head crack. I won't know until I get it back from the machine shop. And the components, I still have to go through that. That's where I am with all these, this, this assembly process and trying to figure out what's wrong with that. So, the plot thickens. Stay tuned. I'll go through this uh, cylinder head reassembly when I get all the, the, the head back and when I get all the parts clean, we'll put it back together. And um, we'll see where we continue from there, okay? Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.